Hi, everybody, and welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue on with what we covered last time. Last time we covered purely categorical data versus what we refer to as continuous data. Categorical data merely distinguish between the values that the variable can be, and continuous data does other things, but at a bare minimum, it has an order to it. We're going to dive more into that topic today for uh, just a few minutes. So let's get going. OK, so some variables naturally are just uh, dichotomous or binary or have only two values. For example, a light switch could be on or off. There's not really anything in between those two things that a light switch could be. Uh, you could be living or deceased, and there's not really anything in between there, uh, depending on uh, some theology, I suppose, and some uh, philosophy, right? Uh, there can be things that are yes or no, like did you vote in the last election or not? You can't have sort of voted, right? And so there are things where just there's there's a clear distinction between these two things. There are also variables that have multiple values uh, that, that I'll give you some examples of here in a moment, but that they just distinguish among each other, okay? Now, some other things have multiple values they can take on. Uh, and in fact, almost limitless, uh, and in some cases actually infinite. For example, distance is an excellent example of something that is continuous, an inherently continuous variable, because it can go from zero to almost infinity, essentially. I mean, depending on what we believe the nature of the universe is. You can go billions of light years, for example. You can do you know, just a few feet, a few inches, even some uh, nanometers, and things like that. So there are lots of different kinds of variables and the value, uh, there's a wide range, almost infinite range of the values that variables can take on. A variable has to have at least two values it can take on or it's not a variable, um, as we discussed last time. And variables can have multiple infinite values, of course, as well. So a quick recap of categorical variables or variables with categorical properties and only categorical properties is that the values that variable can take on must uh, just distinguish from each other. That's all they do is distinguish from the other values. I'll give you an example of that in just a minute. We're going to start to discuss that a little bit, and then we're going to move into new properties, specifically ordinal properties, and what that means, how you can tell uh, what it looks like. Okay, so let's start with an example of purely categorical data. In other words, data that can take on multiple values. In fact, you could probably come up with maybe 100 values uh, or even more for this uh, variable, but uh, it's essentially purely categorical in nature. So uh, let's take religion. Religion, of course, can have multiple values to it. If I were to, in other words, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, let's ask, you know, let's say to a thousand people, what religion are you? And then they would give me some answer, right? And let's just take some of these. Naturally, there are far more religions than these, but let's let's take these. So now, you as a researcher, uh, how would you order these if you wanted to? First of all, an important question here is: Does it matter if I put them in in some kind of order or not? And if I were to put them in some kind of order, how would I decide how to do that? Now, the question here you should essentially end up with, or, or the answer you should probably end up with is. I can't see any reason necessarily to order them in one way or the other. I could maybe easily just kind of alphabetize them, but is that the right way to do it? No, it's just an arbitrary way of doing this. Other ways you might order them is maybe the uh, how long they have been around. Okay, I guess you could do that, right? How long these uh, religions have been around. You could also maybe do the size of the membership of the religion. You could maybe do it by that. But the point is, if there's no inherent... Uh, order to these just by giving you these values that's purely categorical data okay this is essentially where we are because there's no inherent ranking to them or order to them this is pure categorical data it does not have ordinal properties as we would say in other words there is no inherent order just to hit that nail on the head a little harder so just once again all this does is distinguish among the different uh, values the variable can take on Baptist is different than Muslim. It's not better, it's not worse, depending on exactly what you're talking about, right? It's just different, and that's all it intends to do in our particular research question. Okay, what about this one, though? Let's say that we've got the Olympic medal variable, and I give you these categories. How would you rank these? Silver, gold, and bronze. 
if you think for a minute, of course, you would probably say, well, obviously gold is the better metal, right? Gold is the better, better one, then silver it comes next, and then bronze. If you were to say, hey, uh, which metal would you prefer to get in the Olympic medal system? You would say gold. Everybody would say gold. That, that would be the better one. Now, the reason for that is somebody decided years ago, right, the Greeks or whatever, decided a very long time ago that gold would outrank silver and silver would outrank bronze, okay? The point, however, is that everybody essentially universally agrees that this is the metal system. This is it. So in other words, there is an order to the values the metal can take on. Not only is bronze different and distinct from silver and the same from gold, but also silver is inherently better than bronze. Okay. So in other words, this has ordinal properties. There is an inherent order to it. In this particular case, it's also better Okay, we can say that gold is better than silver and gold's better than bronze, right? In other kind of ordinal variables, it doesn't have to be better, but there is just an inherent order. And I'll give you some examples of what I mean there in a moment. Okay, so just to recap here also that all data with ordinal properties must also have categorical properties. In other words, all variables, if they can take on, well, first of all, they must take on more than one value, and those values have to be able to distinguish from each other, otherwise it's not a variable. So that means categorical. All data are categorical at a bare minimum, and then some variables are more than that. Some variables have this inherent order or ranking to them. We call those ordinal properties or ordinal characteristics. That's totally fine. Now, there are some additional properties that some data can have as well. I'm going to get into those at another time. I'm going to just stick with ordinal properties for this particular micro lecture. All right, now let's practice and see how we can do here. So this is one way I want you to think about this, these visuals, at least I hope. So this one on the left, this image on the left, if you think of it like this, this is what we talked about with purely categorical data, is that it's just identifies differences and the order in which they are doesn't actually make any difference it's just distinguishing among the values that variable can take on versus the one on the right which is closer to the metal ranking system of the olympics is that there is some inherent ranking system to it or at least an order it doesn't have to be ranking as in terms of better or worse as i said so let's try this the English alphabet, is that inherently categorical or ordinal? Now maybe pause the video for a minute and think about it, come up with your answer for each of these, and then you can start it up as I will give you my answer. I think the best answer here is that it is clearly ordinal. Of course, a B is different from letter C, but we also know that B does come before C. We, have, we, we use the uh, alphabetical system all, all the time in many instances and in many cases, and it does not change from English system to English system. So A always comes before B, C always comes before X, and so on, right? So I think at a bare minimum, you would say that the alphabetical system in uh, the English uh, language is, of course, ordinal. Uh, it does matter the uh, order in which the letters come. All right, frog species. Think about that for a moment. Now, frog species, of course, it would depend on what you're doing with the research. I mean, unless you're specifically interested in which species came in the chronology before another one, there's really no difference. You're probably using species merely to distinguish among the different kinds of frogs, the different species of frogs. So I think that would be inherently categorical data and nothing beyond that, uh, depending on how you're using it. Hair color is an interesting one. So imagine you're uh, asking a whole bunch of people what their hair color is. Is there any reason to believe that blonde uh, comes before or after brown, before or after red hair, before or after black hair? Um, I think generally there's not really any useful uh, uh, way to do that exactly, so the categorical seems maybe most appropriate. However, I think you could make the argument that it has some inherent order to it in the amount of pigmentation um, uh, or, or the amount of uh, melanin in the hair itself. Now, if you did something like that, you could make the argument that there is some sort of order. So, for example, if you had blonde on one side, and then it would slowly get to darker hair and then black on the other side, and red would be probably somewhere in between the brown and the, and the blonde, I think that would be fair, okay? So one point here is that it's not 
always absolutely clear that there should be that it should be treated as categorical or ordinal. Some of the variables you have to kind of decide and, and come up with and, and decide how you want to measure that and how you want to treat it. But I think in the end, uh, hair color it would be really fine with either one. Zip code's an interesting one, so think about that. What is the purpose that a zip code serves? For example, uh, my university is at zip code 60605. Does that mean it came before 60606? Does that mean it's better than 60606? Does that mean it's larger than 60606? Not necessarily, it probably did come before, but the way that we use zip code merely distinguishes from other zip codes. So it looks a lot more like this graph on the left as opposed to the one on the right. For example, I grew up in zip code 80909. Does that mean that we outrank zip code 60605? Uh, no, it doesn't. And so the way we use zip code, I think, is inherently categorical. Unless you wanted to use it in terms of like chronology and when it showed up, there's, there's really no reason for that, I don't think. Shoe size. Obviously, this one is at least ordinal. Um, a shoe size of nine inherently is larger than a shoe size of eight in any metric. And so therefore, shoe size does have inherent order to it. Okay. Political party is an interesting one. Um, now, of course, there are multiple political parties. Let's just take, for example, independents, Republicans, Democrats, and Libertarians. Uh, you could throw in the Green Party, the Constitution Party, or whatever. There are lots of uh, uh, kinds of political parties. Is there an inherent order to these? And not necessarily an inherent order, right? So I would probably argue these are primarily categorical. Now, this is an interesting case also is you, what you could do is take maybe their policy issues and how far sort of traditionally left versus right the party's uh, current policies seem to be and you could start to mimic an order to it but i think inherently in the end there's not exactly a uh, an order to political party uh, precisely so and once again, this is where you need to kind of work with these variables, and sometimes it's not always clear. Probably, if you're not sure what it should do, uh, have a nice discussion with uh, people you trust and uh, people who know a lot about these kinds of things if you're not sure uh, how a variable should go as you're doing research. Okay, so why does it matter that, we're, uh, that we have these ordinal uh, properties? Well, what's interesting about ordinal data is that it's sort of in between categorical data, purely categorical data, and continuous data because it does distinguish among these values but it also is lacking some of the properties of continuous data that we haven't talked about yet and so in many cases sometimes you'll treat ordinal data as categorical for your specific statistical test and you don't know what that is yet we haven't covered any of those uh, statistical tests and what what happens there so i just want to point out here that sometimes you can't it's not really clear where ordinal data should lie um, in sort of statistical test ideas however if you're really interested in, in this kind of stuff, there have been books written about sp uh, specifically doing categorical, uh, I mean, uh, analyses, statistical analyses with ordinal data and only ordinal data. So this is a book I just learned about. Uh, it'll be published in 2025. Uh, it's not by me, obviously. Um, but so there are lots of analyses that are specific to ordinal data. However, in the rest of what we're going to cover throughout these micro lessons, I'll try to be very clear on what sorts of data are appropriate for what analyses. Okay, so a quick recap of what we just did is that ordinal data, just like categorical data, ordinal data does have categorical properties, meaning it distinguishes among the values it can take, but also ordinal data has an inherent order to those values, and essentially everybody should be able to agree what that order is. Sometimes the order will be reverse from yours, but it should go the same order. It just may be mirrored from somebody else, okay? Um, anyway, so that's essentially it with ordinal data. Now, we'll cover the rest of those properties, as I said, properties of continuous data uh, as we come up. But thank you very much. I'll see you next time.